Hi friends, strangers, internet. My name is Emily Hanhan. I love colorful makeup and colorful language. Today I'm here with a pretty new makeup tag. This is the Makeup Marvels tag and this was created by Paige over at Seeking Alexandria. So as I'm watching this, Paige just uploaded this video today. I'm filming on Wednesday. You might even be seeing this on Thursday. Well, you're seeing it whenever you're seeing it. I might even be able to upload it on Thursday. We'll see. Paige is a delightful, delightful creator who I discovered through Teresa. Teresa is dead. And Paige is one of those people that the more I've watched of her and she started to show more of her like true personality on camera and be a little less filtered. And I just love her so much. Like seeing her growth, her, her like how much she's showing herself on the channel and her personality on the channel is just, oh, I love it. I love it so much. Um, Paige was kind enough to like be a part of my 2019 like beauty favorites from different beauty creators video, which felt like, <sighs> I don't know, uh, sorry. I'm fangirling out, but here's the thing. Paige created a really fun makeup tag. There are eight questions and I just instantly was like, I need to do this tag. So, so fun. So I also, so I have like, basically Makeup Marvels is like almost like superheroes um, in the makeup world. And so Paige gave every kind of question, it's like a title, but then she had a little bit of description. And as we're gonna go through it, I'm gonna give you the description that Paige gave because mm, I just adored it. I just adore, okay, I'm really, I, I just, I really enjoyed her sense of humor that came up in this tag. So the first makeup marvel is Lady Prime. And Lady Prime is a primer that actually works. Now, here's the thing. If you know me, I'm actually not much of a primer person, but I'm also not necessarily the person you come to for like foundation and base. I'm going to give my Lady Prime name to um, the Crave Beauty Beat Shield. Now, I've only recently got this. I've had it for, I think, a little over a month now. This is a SPF by Crave Beauty. And I believe it's made with beets, which is why it's called the beet shield and other things. Um, they don't actually call it SPF, they call it an antioxidant day fluid because US FDA, SPF kind of stuff. I don't even know with FDA, I'm sorry. But it does have SPF 50 in it, I believe. It has protected me the times that I've worn it out and about in the sun. And it just feels so good. This is the first SPF, not that I have a huge knowledge base on SPF, but this is the first that I put on my face that just feels like lotion. It just feels like, you know, a nice moisturizer. So for me, because I have like normal skin, I usually don't, I don't go as heavy on my other moisturizers when I use this um, because sometimes it's a little too much but it just feels so nice on the face. And I feel like I don't feel weird putting makeup on top of it. I don't feel weird not putting makeup on top of it. It doesn't burn my under eyes. Like it doesn't burn my eyes if I get sweaty because obviously it's hot outside, I'm gonna get sweaty. It's Lady Prime, you are the one. So makeup marvel number two is the ripe and hype makeup that was actually worth the hype. So in my like makeup community, from very small channels to kind of more mid-range channels, I felt like the Kaleidos Futurism one through three really had such, such hype. People were so excited. They were talking about it so like, just with so much excitement and joy. And, Kaleidos wasn't a brand I had heard a whole lot about. So I was a little like, hmm, I don't know, I don't know. And I've talked about this brand a whole hell of a lot on this channel. I really, really enjoy a lot of what they've done. I haven't tried everything, I don't know everything, 
but uh, I don't have in this. My palettes are not the proper color stories. So um, maybe I'll put a picture on the screen of what they are. But actually this one, this one is this one. So Astro Pink, I think is the, is my favorite of the first three that were released. And like you get different kinds of texture, like a smoother metallic and a more glittery duochrome topper shifter you get deep mattes and more neutral mattes you get like I never use this black if I'm being honest but it's a black with some sparkle in it I never use it I think the quality is really nice on these both the metallics and the mattes and the packaging and the color stories are interesting so they were pretty hyped up in my part of the beauty world and I I feel like they they totally lived up to the hype. I have a runner-up. Technically I have two runners-up because I can never pick. I just want to quickly, quickly just the cover effects monochronic blush duos. I have four of them. I love them. They are worth the hype in my book but I can't shut the fuck up about them. The other one that's a true runner-up is the I feel like just a tiny 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 bit of shame about this. So the Colored Rain Queen of Hearts palette. To me, this was a neutral palette. The hype that the Modern Renaissance got, I think this palette should have gotten. Now this palette did get a lot of hype. I do think that for smaller creators or creators that were more tapped into the indie world, it was a very hyped up palette. And I think it kind of crept out into the bigger beauty world. But it's so gorgeous. The colored rain matte formula is so nice. The shimmers are super creamy and very metallic. And the reason why I feel just, just a little bit of shame is because I decluttered it. I, I know. I, I thought it was too neutral for me and I wasn't really using it. And it's true. I, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't going into it as often and it, it is a little bit more neutral for me, but it's, it's a gorgeous palette. The formula is on point. The packaging is quite nice. If for some reason you're lacking a interesting warm neutral palette, Color Rain Queen of Hearts, worth the hype. Okay, Makeup Marvel number three is The Late Bloomer, a product that you wanted to try and once you've tried it, you wish you tried it sooner. Can we talk about, can we talk about Lisa Eldridge lipsticks? I, I mean, when these were first launched, I feel like everyone was talking about them. The deep reds were stunning. The matte texture on the bullets is like the most beautiful and interesting texture to me. I did not get these until two or three months ago. I bought the pink trio that she had at, the, at that time. I have Rainbow Spill, Love of My Life, and Skyscraper Rose. So I have two of the mattes and one of the like more luminous formula. These are beautiful lipsticks again the packaging is stunning the colors are just gorgeous and the formulas are very very nice so the two mattes in my experience um these two mattes stay on my lips really nicely they will transfer but the color stays on so it's something i can not really mess with for hours and there's a little wear and tear but not a huge amount of it this luminous or more glossy formula i'm still getting to getting used to it i always have a lot of issues with like lipsticks um sticking to the inner part of my lip and this one struggles with that but i like the formula and i like the sheer buildable um formula of this that's what i'm trying to say Lisa Eldred had her had her lipstick light out for a long time before I got to try them. While I am sad that I did not try them sooner, I am so happy I have them now. Just beautiful, beautiful lipsticks. Makeup Marvel number four is Tentative Tingles. Uh, a 
product or palette that you were maybe on the fence about but immediately fell in love with. I feel like none of the products I'm talking about today are all that like unique to my channel because I feel like I've talked about them a lot but Miss Hannah Smoky Glow and Midas Cosmetics this palette. Now if I'm being completely honest when I saw this palette on um, like revealed I wasn't tentative about buying this palette but I had been very tentative about Midas because they were a newer indie brand to the market. I was hearing good things but a lot of the good things I was hearing from were people that had received them in PR or maybe it was from creators who I like and I follow but I don't always think they have like an extremely critical eye. Like I think you can get what, what I'm saying with that. So this is the first thing I got from Midas. I got the whole set, the glosses, the highlighter, and the, the eyeshadow. And I just wasn't sure what to expect. And I have to say, between the shimmers and the mattes in this, in this palette, it makes me excited to pick up more things from Midas. I'm not sure if I want to pick up older products from their line because I'm not sure if they match up. Um, but moving forward, I do like how vibrant is that color rose? Um, nutty is, is a nutty, like duochromatic shimmer. Um, again, Warrior is super bright and beautiful. I mean, I know I'm showing you super, super bright colors, but like, if you've been around here, you know, this is the kind of stuff that I love. And these mattes just they're just gorgeous and it is very pinky and purpley toned so obviously if that's not your cup of tea this might not be a palette for you but it's very very pretty and it makes me just more excited to see what's coming next with Midas. Midas and Neon MUA those face palettes at least one of those will be mine that's gonna happen and I will have pink and purple fingers for the rest of the video. Makeup Marvel number five is the Game Changer, a product that literally changes how you do your makeup or has changed a specific step. I thought about this question for like 0.2 seconds and then I kind of just knew. I knew what the answer had to be. My refer brushes. This entire collection is not all refer, but this is my brush holder. But this face bronzer blush brush, the eye brushes, the eye brushes. So Refer is my, is the first time I've extensively worked with um, natural hair brushes. Most of my brushes before this were synthetic. I did have a couple of natural hair that I liked, but the eye brushes, like I just recently bought like four of the number 13s and another number 16 because they were in the concept store which means they were like $12 each. Um, I love the number 14. I I need them. I need them to figure out what they're gonna do and come out with the P21. This is a prototype. This is like the only brush I use to apply shimmers. It's either this brush or it's my finger. I fucking love this brush. This has changed. This alone changed things for me. The face brushes are beautiful. The thing with, with I keep, keep wanting to say synthetic, the thing with natural hair bristles, these in particular, I feel like they pick up enough product and they kind of have more of a grip to the product. And then, you know, they lay it down really nice. Like this brush right now has blush on it, but this is a gorgeous like powder brush. Like I can get it underneath my eyes or all over my face. It's, it's my game changer. They just are. Refer brushes are my game changer. Now, Lady Lash is Makeup Marvel number six. Lady Lash is the mascara that actually looks like the bitch in the box. I mean, here's my thing. I'm not a big mascara person, but I love what I love and the Essence Lash Princess Waterproof, I love. It gives you volume, voluminous, on the verge of clumpy, depending on how old it is, lashes. To me, it gives me a little bit of length, it gives me volume, it stays on, it doesn't smudge, it does come off with like an oil or balm cleanser at the end of the night. It's less than $5. 
Lady Lash looking vol voluptuous in her packaging at that. Lucky number seven. Makeup Marvel number seven was the marvel that I knew I needed to take notes about how Paige was describing things because this just fucking killed me. And so Makeup Marvel number seven is the shine and dine. The gloss that's shiny without the flypaper effect. The, the flypaper effect is alternatively known as being sticky as a nasty dicky. Thank you, Paige, for that. That will stand in my brain for a long time. Now, of course, I always have a hard time just picking one answer in tags. So I have three, technically, again. Okay, I'm starting with my runners up that are technically not necessarily the answer to the question, but they kind of are. And that is the Proper Beauty lipsticks. And the reason why I wanted to give them runner up is that they are glossy like a gloss, pigmented like a lipstick. Like it's both. So I'm wearing Limit Limitless. Yes, Limitless right now. If you layer it up a little bit, it looks super shiny. Um, and then it'll settle down as you wear it, kind of mattifying itself a little bit without going full dry down matte. So they are a runner up. They're really more of a sheeny, glossy lipstick. But I've been loving them, so Prapa, here's just, just a little bit more love. Another brand I've already loved on in this video, another collection I've already loved on, but I wanted to give one more bit of makeup Marvel love to, is the Midas Cosmetics like Smoky Glow Gloss in Never Dull. This particular color formula combo is so, so lovely. I actually should reach out to Midas and ask, because they have other glosses that are not in the Smoky Glow collection. I'm curious to know if they have any other glosses they would say are compar comparable to this one. The other two glosses in that collection are nice, but this just has the beautiful, beautiful, like very neutral with a little warm, kind of reminds me of another gloss I'm about to talk about, like just, just a little something with a nice formula, a little shimmer, shimmer and shine without feeling it on the lips. I even like the little square component because it feels a little different compared to everything else you might, uh, you know, uh, like, in, it feels a little different versus anything else you might find in your bag like as you're digging around for your gloss. But, um, the queen has re-entered the collection recently and my true makeup marvel shine and dine goes to the Fenty gloss bombs. So I just recently picked these two up. Uh, the let's see, this one is is this this is fussy, and then the the original gloss bomb. This gloss bomb is the first gloss in my memory in my recent makeup memory. And by recent, I mean like the last five years. First gloss, I completely panned. I went all the way through it. And actually, that's interesting. I feel like, I feel like Midas, the color of Midas is like fussy and the original gloss bomb combined. So the gloss bomb is just a little warmer and then fussy is a little bit more pink, but they're both really, really natural on the lips. I just love the, these glosses. I like the cherry candy watermelon scent. I think they layer really nicely over other colors. They look really nice on like bare lips. They were out of my collection for like over a year, probably closer to a year and a half. And I'm so happy to have them again. And I have a feeling I will end up going through these yet again. Now Makeup Marvel number eight, which is the last on the list, is the Anti-Cake. And the Anti-Cake is a powder that sets without being all kinds of doughy nasty on your face. So if you've never thought about it, there are definitely times when like foundation and powder or concealer foundation and powder will kind of cake together and you get that, as Paige has described it, that doughy nasty feeling. Yeah, that's where that comes from. It is a thing. It's why a lot of times I don't like foundation. 
but um i and okay here's the other thing kind of similar to question number one i've not been using much powder lately at all now when i go back to needing to like wear my makeup for a much longer period of time like if i'm going out in the world i do find that powder is helpful for a little bit more longevity and if i ever need to repurchase a loose powder because i have a lot of it in my collection and it's not decreasing very quickly because i'm not powdering but if i were to go back and buy something again i gotta give it to the hourglass the veil and i think because it's something i would go through so slowly i don't mind spending the money for the veil it's such a nice powder it's like a nice mill on it um i feel like it's not totally matte but it's also like not weird and glittery glowy it's just it's super like it's super finely milled and it feels very silky once i'm actually dipping my finger in in here um but yeah it just feels like one of those powders that will set but it doesn't make me feel cakey or too dried out or it's not something I feel like I need to I don't need to bake to put it on I can lightly apply it all over I can apply it a little bit heavier on the under eyes if I need to so the anti-cake goes to the hourglass veil translucent setting powder and this is a mini just in case you're like what what's going on minis are at that so that is the makeup marvel tag i will have Paige's video and her channel linked in the description box i will have all of the makeup marvel names also listed down there if you're a creator you are tagged tag your it please go watch Paige's channel even if you're not a creator go check out Paige's video on this tag show her some love. I hope you enjoyed this tag. Let me know in the comments too. If you are just watching and you want to answer the questions, feel free to, if you just want to pick out one of the makeup marbles and tell me what it is for you, you can also let me know. I will try to remember to list and link everything I have on my face in the description box. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you aren't already. Follow along with all of our colorful shenanigans. I hope everyone's taking care of themselves. Thank you for spending a bit of your day with me and hopefully I will see you again real soon. Bye friends.